Hey everybody, it's Peter from the Kia Hyundai channel. Welcome to our live video series. This is a fun one for me because these are two cars that I quite like that I think go quite a bit under the radar for most people. And I think you're gonna like them. And I, the, reason I, the reason I think you may not like them is because you don't know about them. And that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you everything I can about these vehicles in the next half hour. So this is the Kia Soul. This is the top of the line version of the Kia Soul. And we're comparing it to the top of the line version of the Kia Forte 5, which is the Kia Forte 5 GT. So what we're gonna do is, like I said, this is a live video series. And if you just came for the content of this video, if you wanna know about either one of these cars, if you want, you can skip ahead to the three minute mark. In the meantime, we're gonna talk about some news and some notes. I'm gonna show you how to join us live if that's something you wanna do. And we're gonna go from there. Somebody says, uh, forget, don't forget the teddy bear and the keys. And you know what? I've already forgotten the keys. I'm hoping they're in the car. So, uh, all right, let me just uh, bring my computer over here for a second here. All right, let me show you how to join us. If you wanna join us, go to our YouTube page at exactly two o'clock Eastern time on a weekday. If we do that, you can refresh this page right over here. And when you refresh the page, if I can do that correctly, there we go. Uh, then you have the live video feed taking up that main spot on the first page of the real estate. You do that, you're gonna watch a quick little ad. What does that ad for? Oh, oh, it's uh, another car company thing. All right, we're gonna skip that ad. I'm sure you'll probably do the same thing. You could watch it if you wanted to. Uh, if you are looking to buy a car in Ontario, connect with me. There'll be a link in the description of this video as soon as we're done, and you can connect with me and I'll connect you with Brantford Kia, Brantford Hyundai, or Owen Sound Hyundai. Those are three dealers that support this channel and they will take care of you. All right. Uh, <laughs> somebody saw some stuff on Instagram and yeah, so I was away for a few days and, uh, if you want to follow, uh, where I was, you can go to my Instagram channel. That's uh, it there. You can see uh, where I stayed. It was a pretty cool place and uh, feel free to follow me on Instagram. We'll have uh, some extra news and notes and stuff in there coming up in the future. So, uh, I do apologize for, for taking some time away from you guys, but uh, it was good to spend some time, uh, outside of here for a bit. All right. So, uh, Sportage pricing, you guys have been asking about this. I filmed a video this morning with Gabby and we had a microphone issue. So we got busy the rest of the day. We're going to either, if she's free, we'll do it again, uh, after this video and we'll put it up. And if not, then we'll, um, I'll just do it myself. And, uh, but we will, we do have Sportage pricing up and we will show you how to get a Sportage earlier at Braver Kia than you could at some other dealer. So that's one thing we're trying to do as well. Uh, so look for that video before I leave here today, I'll post that video and we'll make sure it's up for you. So there we go. Uh, we are about, what are we, half, uh, 20 seconds away from starting this video. Do me a favor, guys, if you are on this video, hit the like button for me. Uh, let's see if we can get a whole bunch of likes early, and then we'll keep, uh, going through and, uh, see if we can earn your likes as we go the way through. All right, I don't have the keys. I feel like I should get the keys. Let's do that right now. One of them I put up here. Yes, we go. Okay. And let's see if I can grab the other one here. All right, we're at the three-minute mark. Three-minute mark. Those of you just joining us, I am just grabbing the keys for this car. Maybe I'm not. Oh, boy. I had the keys out. Oh, there we go. Somebody put it, somebody moved it for me. This is why I grabbed the keys before we started the video. And I do apologize for wasting your time there. All right. So what we have in front of us today are two vehicles that, like I said, are very underrated, maybe misunderstood. And, uh, I am a huge fan of both these. I happen to drive a Kia Soul. I would happily drive a Kia Forte 5. Um, these are good. So best soul to buy is the electric one. That's the one I actually own, but, uh, that may not be the best for everybody. And these ones are not electric. So what we're going to do is show you the key fob really quickly. And which one is which here? Let me make sure of it. Same thing. Okay. So here we go. This is the Kia Forte keys, the black car here in front of me. You have with just about everything now that has a push button start. So no key, you know, no sort of uh, jackknife key. You have the remote start on the key fob there. So we've got remote start on the key fob. We do have a trunk release, which just unlocks the trunk. And then there's all the buttons there. And again, that remote start is kind of nice over here. We have the exact same thing. So these keys I can keep in my pocket the entire time. Same thing, remote starts the vehicle, uh, releases, unlocks just the trunk, but does not pop it because neither of these are powered tailgates. But these are semi-competitive cars. So we're gonna look down here. These are the window stickers for both. You can see 29, 395 is the MSRP. That's usually what we compare. And that's compared to 30,995. But when you go to a um, little bit of difference in the freight here, so 32,740, including the freight versus 31,540. In my mind, those are fairly similarly priced vehicles. The idea being, if you can afford one, you can afford the other. Now, keep in mind in Canada, we don't get the Kia Soul with a turbo engine. So we do have an alternative in a hatchback with a turbo engine that's very fun to drive. And that's what we're looking at. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna start in the Soul 
Kind of go through some of the basics there. Move to the driver's seat of the uh, redesigned Forte 5 because this is a new car. It has some new features that maybe you haven't seen before. And then we're going to go rear seat to rear seat, trunk to trunk. And the trunk comparison, I think, is going to be interesting for a lot of you. We're going to look at lighting, look at feature details, and I'm going to take your questions throughout these as well. And that takes approximately about half an hour. So if that seems like a long time for you, don't leave. Just pause the video. Grab yourself some snacks and a beverage and join us. And it'll be fun, I promise. All right. Actually, I don't promise. I can't promise entertainment, I can promise information. So we'll do that. All right, jumping in the Kia Soul. Now keep in mind, I do not have to have my key um, out for any reason. So it's just in my pocket right now. This is the GT Line Limited. And the GT Line Limited has some appearance package things. You can see the red line down here, red circles in the wheel there. Uh, good size wheel and tire combination. I believe these are, oh, I better not guess at them. Every time I guess, I feel like I'm going to get it wrong. But yeah, these are 18-inch uh, wheels there. So 18-inch uh, wheel and tire combination. That's the largest you can get on the sole. We'll look at the LED lights in a, in a minute here. Uh, but first, we're going to look at some of the front details here. I happen to think that the GT line has the best front end on the sole. So you've got these kind of like little T-type things there. Red line there, GT line right there. Just a sharp looking vehicle. And of course, the new logo as well. All right, let's jump into this car for a second because it's got a lot going on here. One thing I like about the Soul, if I forget to mention it, that is a powered passenger seat. On the Forte we're going to show you, there is no pass power passenger seat. So a little bit of difference there. Uh, a little bit of dirt in here, a little bit of shipping plastic in here. Work with me here. Pretend like you don't see some of that stuff. In the driver's seat here, you have nicely bolstered seats. You have the nice red stitching down here as well. You have a powered seat with a powered lumbar. And you have some cool little details like the sole written up on the side, like in other soles there as well. The leather seats here are very comfortable, very nice. And you gain a few things when you get this trim line in a sole that you don't get in any other sole. So let's just jump in here and show you. The very first thing that is kind of a silly thing that you gain in this sole, not silly, I just, something that's interesting. Every Kia sole that has heated seats has two levels of heated seats. This one has ventilated seats as well, and it has three levels of heated, three levels of ventilated seats. So just a little difference in this GT uh, line trim, this GT limited trim. You do have three levels of seating, which is kind of cool. Down here, there's our start button. I'm going to tap that twice without hitting the brake, and that's going to bring the car to life, but not start the engine because we are indoors. In here, I do want you to ignore fuel efficiency. Dealership cars sit around and idle quite a bit. Uh, we can show you fuel efficiency numbers a little bit later, so don't worry about that. But you do have this nice sort of average fuel economy gauge, and then this uh, little gauge here is an active live bar graph as you're driving that sort of fills in the area. One thing you're going to notice, a couple little things that make this car a little bit nicer. Normal Kia Souls have a sort of matte plastic here. This is a sort of piano black uh, finish around the outside, so it's a little bit nicer looking in here. You've got a few other features that people don't always notice. The automatic setting instead of the intermittent setting on your wipers. So what that means is when you turn on your wipers, if you're driving through a rainstorm, as you speed up, the wipers are speeding up. As you slow down, the wipers will slow down. As you come to a stop, they'll only go what they need to. If the rain speeds up and slows down, they will also adjust speed automatically. So instead of having an intermittent setting, you have the auto setting. I do recommend you leave it off in the winter so you don't have to deal with the automatically coming on during the ice, that kind of thing. But when you set it to intermittent, it works very well to adjust the speed as necessary. And then you could speed up its sensitivity using essentially the intermittent speed so if, or uh, switch. So if you only want it to go a little bit, you can keep it down there. So again, that auto setting is pretty cool there. You also have auto headlights. That's pretty common. We'll take a look at them a little bit later. We've got headlights and fog lights there, LEDs, of course. Uh, jumping across here, pretty easy to read stuff. A lot of information in here. So you got navigation information in there, lane keep, lane follow assist. We can turn that on as well. Um, you don't have, sorry, you don't have lane follow, just lane keeping assist in this car. So you will see some differences in the Forte as we come into that. Tire pressure monitors there as well. And of course, you also have um, a number of things in here, including a digital speedometer, if that's what you want to do. Now, speaking of digital speedometer, let's zoom out to here. And this is hard to film, but easy to see. You also have a heads up display on this little panel in front of you. Well positioned in the Kia Soul, and you can see stuff there. A lot more than just the speedometer that you're seeing now. There can be a lot more information. All right, so we'll zoom back out of there. And one thing about the Kia Soul is the seating position. This is the reason I love the Soul personally. It has a unique seating position. And when you sit in the car, your legs kind of come out and then go down a little bit more. In the Forte, they're going to go out a little bit more. That might be comfortable for you. You know, both are comfortable for me. I just prefer the seating position of the Soul. It's just something I've always liked. You also have good amount of headroom. This seat is sitting quite high. So we can bring the seat all the way up. I'm about six feet tall. Let's just have some fun for a second as we bring the seat all the way up, all the way up. There we go. Video's missing. Oh, interesting. Lost the video feed. 
Apparently we missed the video feed. Are we back? Strangely, the video disappeared. That's never happened before. Let me know if we're back, guys. I don't know if this works or doesn't work. We are back. Somebody's agreeing. We're back. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So I'm bringing the seat all the way up. Again, I'm a tall person. This is still plenty of headroom with the seat all the way up, and I should probably show you the view out front. All right, the view out front here is I am sitting on, like, I'm looking down at this car. So again, headroom in the sole is tremendous, but you can move the seat a long ways up. So even if you're a short person, you can sit very tall in this car, very SUV-like. So that's coming back down now. Yeah, somebody says that was a test. I have never seen, actually, the video feed go. So now I brought the seat all the way down bringing it all the way lower down here, and you can see the immense headroom there. So I'm gonna bring it up to a comfortable spot because as we show you rear seat space in the future, I wanna make sure I'm showing you approximately where I would sit with this car, and that's kind of where it is. So really good seating position of the sole, that's something to keep in mind. All right, flipping back over here, the 10 and a quarter inch screen is built into the dash here. You're gonna have a few nice things in this car. Sirius XM satellite radio, you're gonna have your Harman Kardon sound system. So that is a very, very nice feature. And one thing you can't get in my electric Kia Soul, and I'm gonna take the shipping plastic off here, you can't get um, dual zone climate control in the electric Soul. You do have that here, which is kind of nice to have. Um, yeah, I'm just a big fan of that overall. It works really well. And again, between that and the rump roasters and the seat ventilation, your passenger could be easily as comfortable as you are. Now, there's a lot of safety and technology features in here. You're gonna have this guest mode here. It's the same thing. You can go driver one, driver two, uh, or the guest mode here. So you can set this car up, not just the radio presets, but a whole bunch of settings in here uh, for different drivers. Three different drivers can have all of their presets sort of saved on their system there. And that works well. Steering wheel is tilt, telescoping both these cars. Um, smart cruise control over on this car here as well. So you have that uh, keeping the distance in front of the vehicle with the vehicle in front of you. Um, this one does have, and they both have actually, Uvo Intelligence, which is now called Kia Connect. It can depend on what you're looking for, if it's the app or if in the car. Sometimes it still says Uvo Intelligence. Let's just see what it says here. Yeah, it still says Uvo Intelligence here. It's actually Kia Connect on the app, and that will sort of update over time. Uh, basically the same functions in this vehicle as in the Forte 5, although I don't know if you have sounds of nature in that car. Let's take a look at that when we get there. But you have, of course, your mapping system here, your navigation. You have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay through a wired connection in this car. Uh, so we're going to get out of that for a second here. Down, satellite radio in both the cars. Uh, down here you do have, or I don't know if satellite radio in both cars. I think it does. Uh, then you down, have down here your uh, wireless phone charger, USB door past there, a US or 12 volt door behind there, and the USB port there. And of course you have your automatic transmission. This again is 147 horsepower. The other vehicle we're looking at today does have 100 and, uh, or sorry, 201 horsepower and 195 foot pounds of torque. So there is more power in that car. We're gonna talk about the performance advantages there, but if you don't need performance, this car performs fine, but it's not a performance car. Um, so you can look at both of these cars kind of equally. All right, we did show you the push button start. We did show you, come on camera, I'm trying to, oh boy, what's going on here? All right, let's see. There we go. We did show you the gear shift before, so we'll just uh, show you here. You can put it into drive and shift it this way, and you do have eight gear ratios that you could switch through on a manual assist type setting. And again, the drive modes here is only two drive modes, normal and sport on a Kia Soul. Why don't we show you the backup camera while we're here? As we do that, you can see a nice clear backup camera. It's hard to film a screen, but of course it looks very clear there. And you do have your guidelines there. The blue line stays straight, yellow and red sort of turn with the wheel, give you a sense of where you're headed. So overall, there's the basics in this car in the front seat. Let's quickly jump into the Forte 5 and compare some differences. While we're here, let's just take a look at one more thing around here. This one does have the red accents. That is standard on this trim line. So um, they are showing a little more bright red in person. They're a little bit less, or in the camera, they're a little bit less bright in person. So um, I quite like them. I think they look pretty cool. And again, one thing with the sole, like we mentioned, that sunroof, but you're sort of centered nicely underneath the sunroof. You do have, uh, in both these cars, the sunglasses holder as well, which is going in the way of the dodo bird in uh, some of our vehicles. So let's jump out of this for a second here, and let's compare it to the Forte 5. Now, without talking about the differences in performance, which we'll get to closer to the end of this video, um, there is more of a performance feel to this car as well. A little bit lower down seating position. As we jump in here, it is an artificial leather. Is that a CD in the door pocket? There is no CD in the door pocket, I promise. Uh, anyways, a little bit different seat position. You are lower down. This is uh, an artificial leather, and it does have the perforations because, again, heated and ventilated seats here. You still have the lumbar support. You have probably a little bit extra side bolstering in here, the red details as well. But again, when you get into this car, it's going to feel a little bit more like a performance car because you sit a little lower. Now, is it uncomfortable? Not at all. I personally think the Soul is one of the most comfortable cars in the small car segment. 
However, nothing wrong with this, but you can see my legs here. Instead of going this and like down, it comes like this and out a little bit more. So just a little bit different there. There's no CD player on these models. That's correct. Look like a CD case. Oh, we'll have to go see what we saw in there. All right, so let's keep uh, going around here before we go back to going too far off track. Harman Kardon sound systems of both these cars. This one has a start button in the traditional place up here, not down the center. Little bit different uh, screen in here. You do have a color display screen here. And again, ignore fuel efficiency, but same type of thing here. Um, actually, this car gets very good fuel efficiency. We'll show you that in a second. But a live bar graph there, very similar dash here. Very similar situation over here. We were gonna check if it has sounds of nature. I think this car did not have sounds of nature and it looks like I am correct. So uh, no sounds of nature in this, but pretty much the same software in here, navigation, everything else there uh, as well. Like we mentioned, the Harman Kardon sound system. Uh, now, I wasn't sure about the satellite radio. I, you know what? Let's just double check here. I think, yes, of course. Yeah, I was listening to satellite radio in this car. I drive so many cars in a day, guys. Sometimes I uh, get a little bit confused about which one had what. So we do have that. Um, all right, so let's uh, flip back around here. Down here, you still have the dual zone climate control. You still have the same sort of shelf with the wireless charge pad. You still have the same USBs and 12 volt ports in here. You do have a different transmission. So where the other one has an IVT transmission that can go into eight speeds, this is a six, or sorry, seven speed transmission, and it is a dual clutch. So when you're switching gears here, you're switching into real gears, um, very quick shifting, efficient uh, transmission there. And uh, actually, let's just throw it in reverse again. Same type of thing exactly with the backup camera here. If I turn the wheel, same thing, the blue line stays straight. So a lot of similar features in here. So when you look through the center, um, the center display screen there, where you get a few differences is coming over here. Being a little bit more sports performance oriented, you can see the paddle shifter in behind there. And also a little bit newer with the redesign, you have lane follow assist here right on the steering wheel. So lane follow assist right here does have, um, the button that allows you to keep centered in the lane and keep you uh, centered there. The other difference is over here, you have an extra star button, which is just a customizable button. The other uh, usually has pick up and hang up. Now you can customize this to hang up and other things as well. And again, as we take a look at the, um, the uh, wipers here, you have the traditional intermittent setting instead of the auto wipers, you do have the auto headlights. So just a few differences uh, feature-wise, we do still have the Uvo Intelligence Kia Connect, which I meant to show you right here, uh, right there on the mirror. And like we said, uh, over there is the sunglasses holder. So let's take a, somebody says deal breaker. Oh, I, I missed what your deal breaker is. So I'll have to go double check that in a second. Headroom again, very good. You can come a long ways up, but no matter what, you can't sit the height of a crossover, an SUV. Uh, in this vehicle. You are a little bit lower in this car compared to the Soul where you do sit a little higher. Now, I've got this seat roughly where I need it. What we're gonna do now is go take your questions and then we're gonna go rear seat to rear seat and trunk to trunk. That is an interesting comparison between these cars. So stay with us for that and we'll also go take your questions. Oh, no sounds of uh, no sounds of nature is not a deal breaker. As you guys know, I did a video on, on the last day I worked in 2021 and I said, sounds of nature is kind of silly. I don't need it, don't like it. So we're gonna go over and take your questions right now. Do me a favor guys, we've got about 40 uh, likes so far. Let's see if we can hit 80 likes today. So uh, we'll go for 80 likes, jumping out of here. Let's jump across and uh, hello from the Netherlands, someone says. All right, let's just put the camera over. Oh, come on camera, it's having trouble following me. All right. Put the camera here. What I'm gonna do is see if I can take your questions other than the CD talk. We have to go figure out what you guys thought was a CD in there. We'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, we've literally never used them in two months, which is, I'm not sure what we're talking about here. Uh, okay, we'll look at that in a second. Okay, so we talked about USB and CD players, a lot of CD talk. <laughs> Happy tears for CDs. Okay, there are no questions here whatsoever. You guys like the CDs. I do apologize for losing the video feed earlier, guys. Hopefully we've stabilized that by going on the cell phone network here. Um, yeah, you know what? I don't see a ton of questions about these cars. So what I'm gonna do is jump back into the uh, rear seats here. We can, if you have questions, feel free to keep asking them. And like I said, let's see if we can go for 80 likes. We got about 35 to go uh, to get there. So we can do this. All right, rear seat, we're gonna start with the sole once again. So again, I had the driver's seat roughly set to where I needed it. And we're gonna jump into the rear seat here. Again, same kind of detailing here. Both of these cars have two levels of seat heating in the rear. So rump roasters in the rear, and they are just rump roasters. Only the seat bottom in these vehicles, not the seat back. The front seats are seat back and seat bottom. Jumping in here, again, a little bit easier to get in and out potentially because again, a little bit more square vehicle. Headroom is immense for a small car. Legroom is excellent here because your uh, feet are, your legs are flat on the uh, seat there and it's very comfortable. You do have an armrest in here, right over here. 
and you've got everything almost right. There's uh, a couple little things that some of you are gonna want. Sometimes uh, you guys want vents over here. This one does not have it. It does have a single USB port down there. It does have a pocket over here on the passenger side. And again, the idea is that was used to be for the drivers. I am a fan of having one on the driver's side as well. It does not have one here. You do these plastic back seats. Let's move, remove that shipping plastic. Uh, but you do have plastic back seats, which can be wiped down easily. If we take a look over here again, at me, you can see you've got a ton of legroom here. So knee room is fantastic. The Kia Soul is known for rear seat space. And you can do one thing that you can't always do in these cars. Put your, put your head on the headrest and you don't hit your head on the ceiling. It's just a nice square, uh, large roof here. So very good rear seats in the Soul. Let's go with that in mind, right to the Forte 5. And we'll see the Forte 5 and do the exact same thing. Jumping into this car. Again, not difficult to get in, but it is a little bit lower. You gotta have a little bit more of a duck there. And you can see headroom's fine for a six footer, but obviously less than the sole. Same thing down here. You've got an armrest here, which is right there. And again, my legs are pretty flush to the seat, uh, which is very good for a small car. The sole is a little bit better in that aspect. So again, heated seats here, I can show you them right now. Uh, heated seats right there, two levels of seat heating in there. Again, seat bottoms only. You do have a plastic back seat here. Take all that shipping plastic off. Plastic back seat with a netted pocket this time. I think these are, in some cases are a little bit better because you can sort of see what's in there. They seem to be a little stretchier to me. You do gain the vents on this car and you can turn them on or off and uh, aim them left and right. You have a single USB port down there. And on the driver's side, again, still no net. Again, sitting six footer behind a six footer with my knee room right here. Less than the sole, but still plenty of space down there. A little bit more foot room in the sole as well, but still very comfortable. So overall, the sole has a little bit more passenger space uh, than this, but this still fits the six footer behind a six footer. So it's pretty good that way. Um, all right, let's jump out back here. What we're gonna do now is my favorite part and your favorite part. We're gonna do the teddy bear test because we're gonna compare trunk space in these vehicles. Now, let's start with this Kia Soul and uh, pop up the trunk here. So you've got a lot going on here. In this top trim level, you do have this little privacy cover, which can be folded back, it can be removed, it can be set there. Uh, we're gonna leave it in. We're gonna take the floor mats out of my way for a minute. And uh, I just got dripped down on my neck. This car is dripping just on the edge because I had it clean and it just dripped right down my shirt. It was very cold. All right, so big thing with the Kia Soul is the trunk doesn't look huge. And a lot of salespeople or customers don't realize that you can drop this down. Maybe they have salespeople realize, but they don't do it. Dropping this floor down gives you a lot of space. Now, the reason you would want to keep it up is when you fold the seats down, you can slide something right across onto those seats. When you drop this floor, like I'm going to do right now, I'll let you see the back there. You drop it here. There's a spare tire there, you can see. And click it into there. Once you drop that floor, it's a significant drop. It makes significantly, it makes quite a bit more room. And as you'll see when I fit the teddy bear in here, he's gonna easily fit in here below that cover. So let's do that right now. Do our little teddy bear test and show you the Kia Soul with the teddy bear inside. All right, sticking him in here. And as we push him against the back of the seat, you can see belly space, he's got a lot. Now, if I had him uh, with the floor raised, he could probably still fit but his belly would be touching the upper piece for sure. So pretty good space in there. Not a ton of length in the sole. You gain that space. Kia Soul prioritizes rear seat passenger space over maximum cargo space. For my family, the sole works perfectly. Now, the Forte 5 is interesting. I just think they do a, such a good job with the space in here. First of all, you still got a cargo cover here. This can be removed, taken out. You can fold down the seats, the same thing as a Kia Soul. I'm gonna take the floor mats out of this one as well. You do have that little red bag there. That little red bag is a uh, cargo net and you can hold things down to the floor with the tie downs right over here uh, in every corner of the trunk. Obviously you can see this is a longer floor, but let's take a look underneath. First of all, those of you that say, is the Forte the same as the Serato? Yeah, it's looking pretty good in the owner's manual. So again, this is the Forte 5, not just the Forte. Now what's kind of cool is this tab right here. You flip that open and you have some velcro e tabs there on that side there if you flip it open on this side you have some elasticized tabs that you can st stick stuff down over there so you could stick you know an umbrella something else like small down there and then you also have the ability to lift this up when you lift this up you have another spot here and what's cool about this is if i don't have the owner's manuals in my way which let's just take them out for a second 
put them down there as well. Again, this car hasn't been uh, properly set up for us yet. If you flip this piece up like that, you can connect this little tab. Oh, come on camera. I should be looking at what I'm doing instead of looking through the camera. That tab goes there. So now the floor of this Forte 5 is stuck up there and you can stick all kinds of things down here. This is, you know, I don't know how deep it is. It's certainly thicker than, you know, two, three laptops thick in there. So you've got some space to stick stuff. Probably some gym shoes would sit in there uh, for most people, not work boots, but gym shoes, that kind of thing. And then you've got the styrofoam piece here, which is gonna be less rattling. Softer items can sit in the plasticky areas right out there. And then you also have more space underneath there, which is a significant amount of space because this one has an inflator kit instead of a spare tire. So if you're going camping, probably most of your clothing can fit right in there. And then you still have this space here. And then you still have all of this space here above the trunk. So a lot of space in the Forte 5. Let's go grab Teddy Bear and see how he fits in there. My pal, Teddy Bear. He is the most underpaid person here. Given all his screen time, I feel a bit sad for him. I don't know if it's a him or her. I don't think we've decided that and I don't think it matters. All right, Teddy Bear, certainly lengthwise, you have more length to the floor here. That's something to keep in mind. Uh, if you need a little bit more length in the um, space down here, you've got that there. Now his belly is going to touch this uh, tab when this, uh, or this uh, roof, uh, sorry, this cover as it comes down, but Teddy Bear's a little squishy. So again, a little bit less ability to stack the height without taking out that cover, but pretty good ability to stack uh, taller things there. The trunk is certainly larger here than in the sole when you talk about lengthwise, but technically, a little bit more height in there uh, in the sole compared to here. So, all right, next step, we're gonna look at lighting. We're gonna also answer your questions. So we're at 57. Let's see if we can get 23 more likes today. Some of you are holding out. I feel like we can do this. We're going for 23 more likes. All right, maybe I've uh, bitten off more than I can chew today. You guys are gonna tell me if that's the case. Oh, camera's having some trouble here. Just putting Teddy Bear back. Teddy Bear looks like he's had a rough day. He's getting a little dirty, we need to fix that up. All right, so what I wanna do now is look at lighting on these cars because both of these cars, ooh, no one to look at me. Definitely don't wanna look at me. Both of these cars have an upgraded lighting over more of a base forte and a base sole. And I think it's worth uh, pointing out what's different and why it looks better. So let's turn the cars back to the on position. Again, we've got the start button over here. We're gonna to go to the on position there. And we're gonna turn on the left side signal on both of these vehicles so we can see them with signals. All right, doing the same thing here. Come around here, quick little view of the interior again. Push button on the dash over on this one. I don't know, I'm trying to film it for you, but I missed it there. All right, so left side signal again. Let's start with the Kia Soul. Again, one thing I wanna point out, when I'm looking at this, that is not yellow and white. That is bright white and regular white. And same thing over here, we've got sort of bright white. So ignore the coloring differences. They look similar, although the, the color is slightly different in the sole. We've got LEDs on both these. Let's take a look at what we've got. First of all, your overall trim here is, this right here is the LED, just kind of regular daytime running light, and it is in both uh, sides. On this trim, you have headlights right here. Let's take a look at them. Bright headlights there. And then you have fog lights down there, which are nice and bright as well. And again, that LED daytime running light will always be on when you're driving, just as a little eyebrow underneath. Overall pattern, you can see uh, very bright, nice sharp cutoffs, uh, very qu quite good. And again, the coloring doesn't match on camera. I don't know why. Uh, down there, an LED um, light there. Now coming over here, similar idea. You've got LED daytime running lights up the top, dashed lighting up there. And then you've got the blazingly bright LED lights right there. And then also down the fog lights, blazingly bright, individually aimed, if I can get them right. See, I can sort of see they're individually aimed uh, fog lights down there. So really kind of cool lighting. Again, they've updated the Forte here, looks pretty sharp. And then again, this LED light here, one, two, three right there, they switch into signal lights as you turn on the signals. So now let's take a look at the back. Both of these uh, vehicles have uh, LED lights on the mirrors there. Same thing over here. Sometimes the amber doesn't show up really well on camera, especially when it's flashing, but you can see it well over there. Now, back here, no change for the Forte 5 for 2022. You've got really unique lighting here. It looks so good at night. It looks so much more high end on this car. And again, big exhaust here, diffuser down there. Definitely a sportier look to this car. We're gonna talk performance about this in just one second. And then over here, same idea. In the lower trim soles, this is kind of all filled in with a brake light, tail light all together. But in the higher trims, you have this little kind of almost beaded look uh, that just wraps right around there. It looks way higher end. 
and then the signal lights in there. So it looks really sharp to me, single uh, LED in the center there and single LEDs down here to just cover off your brake lights. So very cool there. And uh, so let's talk really bit, a quick bit about performance. A lot of people think that the Kia Forte GT or Forte 5 GT is essentially just a wheel and tire package. It's not. The entire rear suspension of this car versus the lower trim is ripped out and replaced with a multi-link suspension that works very well. You have bigger wheels and tires. You have an exhaust system that runs down the center and does sound better as well. It is not obnoxiously loud, but it does have a nicer tone. And that would be one reason to buy this car. This car is not just about more power. It's very much balanced handling with balanced extra power. It's very, very fun to drive. The Kia Soul, still fun to drive, but not in the performance way. Fun to drive as in it's comfortable, it's uh, dirty around town, it's easy to park. The square look makes it easy to you know, see exactly where the lines are, great visibility, actually great visibility in both these cars. Uh, but of course, you can decide for yourself which one is you know, kind of quirky and the way you like it. So Soul is always gonna be a quirky car, nothing else looks like it, but so is this Forte 5. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go take your questions. We got 82 people on, we got 62 likes. I was going for 80 likes. I feel like we could get there. Oh, we were going for 60? I think we were going for 80. Yeah, we should go for 80 likes. So that's 18 more likes, we can get there. What I'm gonna do is see if I have any questions down here that can help. Uh, so I showed something a while ago, what did I show? Do they have the same leg room in the back seat? Uh, different, uh, both are comfortable for me, but it's different in the way it's comfortable for me. So if you skip back a little bit, you should be able to find that. Probably around the 20-ish minute mark, 20 uh, or so minute mark, we'll have that uh, uh, there. <laughs> Thought Teddy was gender neutral. I thought Teddy is gender neutral, but I always say it's he, and I feel like maybe I shouldn't say that. All right, wet towels and swimsuits or after camping or at the beach or swim pool? Yeah, if you do stick your wet towels and beach stuff in that bottom trunk area, remember to take them out of there because it is sort of a not fully sealed off area, but of course being somewhat sealed off, you wanna make sure that they don't stay down forever. Uh, what I like about these hatchbacks with this underfloor storage space is keep in mind, because it's not a sedan with a separate trunk, if you do stick your smelly stuff in the back of the car, you can hide those under the floor and that can also keep that odor down for a while, but don't leave them there because eventually that odor will sit in the car for a while. All right, Tribute was your first car. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a Ford, but they called it a Mazda. It was very confused. All right, uh, so that's one of our regulars there. Okay, uh, do you have plastic back seat here too? Uh, yeah, you have plastic seat and I ripped off the plastic. Yeah, so that was a shipping plastic that I ripped off. Uh, when the radio's off, do these still have the option to display analog or digital clock? Yes, there is what's called a screensaver mode. Uh, so if you want to turn that screen off and have the screensaver be an analog or digital clock, you can still do that. So there is that. Uh, okay, let's well, go. I think we go for the Forte 5 GT, better performance, more trunk, lane fall assist, and no sounds of nature. So here's the thing, La the Forte 5 GT, is a little bit more expensive. Now keep in mind, if you wanted this in sedan, it would be a little bit less expensive and you could also go sedan with the same engine, same transmission and have sort of the similar look. The GT Line Forte is gonna be similar features to this one, but same engine transmission. So if you like one over the other and you wanna save some money, that's one way to do it. Uh, if you want the Soul in um, a turbo engine, you can't get that in Canada, so this becomes your option. Uh, which one's best for you? For me, it would be tough. I really like the seating position of the Soul. I like the way there's the rear uh, seats are a little bit more spacious. Um, I don't say more spacious, but different spacious, right? They ha certainly have more headroom for sure. Um, for me, I really like the performance driving of this car. Uh, fuel efficiency, we can show you that here. The Soul is the more efficient engine, so 8.5 and 7 liters, but the Forte is the more efficient um, aerodynamic, so 8.9. So higher fuel use in the city, less fuel use on the highway. And that's where your aerodynamics start coming into play there. So highway mileage is very similar, 6.9 and 7 on the highway, but the 8.5 and 8.9, again, very similar uh, do that. Do they have the same ground clearance? Probably not. The Solt is gonna likely be a little bit higher than the um, ground clearance on the Forte 5. I don't have those measurements right in front of me today, but I'm confident that the Forte 5 is a little lower. The Soul is really a small crossover. It is only a front wheel drive. If you want an all wheel drive version of the Soul, the Kia Seltos is a great option there that'll give you a lot of the same options. Um, but the Forte is gonna be a little bit lower. And again, that's partly just about giving you that extra handling, that center of gravity, they wanna keep it a little bit lower. Uh, very fun to drive good handling car. So 
There's kind of your comparison between these two. If you're looking for a small hatchback, why not test drive them both? You could do that here at Brantford Kia. Uh, actually, this one is sold right now. We have other sold for you to drive. Uh, Forte 5 is available for you. So we haven't uh, had a whole lot of vehicles in stock, but you could have them uh, test drive it in stock today. So we hit 73 likes. We did what we could, couldn't hit 80. Uh, which model sold is this? It is the GT Limited, or the GT Line Limited. So that's a Canadian model. And of course the Forte 5 GT. So good question there. All right. We need six more likes, someone said. Uh, my math, oh, we do need six more. We hit 74 likes, so we were gonna go for 80. I'm gonna close out with this. We have a lot of EV6 content coming up. I know we were supposed to talk about the Sportage pricing. We've tried to do that this morning. We're gonna do that again this afternoon. That's coming up today. So we'll have that out as well. Um, and we have a lot of videos coming up. The Ionic, Ionic 5 stuff. I wanna compare an Ionic 5 with the EV6. So we're gonna try to do that in the near future as well. A whole lot coming up here in the next uh, couple of weeks or so. Uh, so yeah, so join us. Feel free to hit subscribe. To the 78 people that hit like so far, I appreciate you. To the two people who just decided, gonna wait, I respect you. I respect your independence. All right, thanks guys for watching. We will see you again in the next one.